Hi, Max. Hello. Thank, thank you so much for coming on and chatting yeah. with me today. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, so why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself and what it is that you that you do? Good question. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm I'm from Barcelona, and I um, my dream has always been to direct uh, film and TV, but uh, obviously that's uh, something that is pretty long term. So professionally, I'm an AD. I'm currently second ADing, and I've been third ADing for some years, but now I finally stepped up. Uh, and on the side, of course, I work towards that dream of directing, which so far, so good, I would say. Um, I'm patient yeah. with it, but uh, I'd, I'd say we're on a good track. I'm also yeah. a musician uh, on my free time. Right here, you could probably see like my drum set. Oh, there, amazing. And my piano right there. <laughs> nice. So, yeah, nice. there you go. So, you're, you've got many talents. Well, <laughs> I'm not particularly talented at, at, uh, at piano. Maybe I'm. I'm good enough at drums I guess but uh but yeah you could say so <laughs> um well let's talk about uh dead funny which is off to Cannes Film Festival soon which oh, is yes. incredible yeah um how are you feeling about that uh, it's really really exciting it's it, it it's a sort of a bittersweet sensation because um we we first won last year the mm -hmm. we won straight eight uh which is a super eight competition mm -hmm. and we what we got told we were we were not gonna going to go to Cannes because oh. it, it got delayed and there was some like COVID stuff in the middle and they were like yeah just do it just as well next year and you'll get you get into Cannes and we were a bit let down because obviously we had won and it's a really tough competition and it was like mm. okay well we had the BFI which is, was really nice but Cannes is like is 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 another level right yeah. And I tried my best to convince the organizer, please, can we go with the 2023 people, please? And I was like, no, that doesn't work that way. We'll just, it has to, you have to do it again. And yeah. somehow we got this email saying, yes, you're going with the 2023 people. So that was a really, really nice surprise. Um, mm. We thought we had won this year again, but we we have no idea. We'll we'll find out, I guess, in, in two days, I think. But, oh, exciting. Uh, but yeah, exciting. I don't think we'll go two for two, but... Um, yeah, it was an, an incredible surprise, and we are super pumped for Can we, We've already made our travel plans, so we're just waiting now. <laughs> well, for anyone that hasn't seen Dead Funny, I would definitely recommend watching it. Um, Josh Harvey, who has been on this yeah. podcast, um, oh, he's has in he? it. Yeah, he's nice. he's in a podcast. Yeah, um, so yeah, he's in it, and um, it is really really good. I, I I've watched it a few times, and <laughs> I just love I love how it's filmed. I love that it's it, it's one roll of Super Eight yeah. film, isn't it? No yeah. cuts. Yeah. No cuts. Yeah. So how how was that process? Obviously, no retakes, no edit, and stuff like that. Yeah. And, find it. and the music is also synced separately, so we have absolutely no idea if it'll sync properly or not, uh, which is really fun. It, it really challenges you as a as a filmmaker. We I had never. Uh, played around with film before the, that mm -hmm. funny and it was really it was it was both a like a really really interesting collaborative process and also individually super challenging and entertaining because obviously we, we live in a digital era where we can just shoot as many takes as we can if we have the time for it and you don't really think as much as about what you're what you're filming what what you're trying to say with each shot and because we had to essentially edit the film in camera every single shot and its duration had to have a meaning and an intention. So that was yeah. really interesting. And I think all of us came out of it thinking, let's do it again. Let's let's keep shooting in film because it's it really is like really, really rewarding. And mm -hmm. and just getting to see it on screen and, and seeing what you've done months later, but kind of realizing that it your hard work essentially, you know, worked together at peace. It it made sense. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was really satisfactory. So, who came up with the um, the story of the film? <laughs> Good question. Um, we all went to the pub, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> the entire team, and we we started some like spitballing ideas. Um, I, I don't, I can't quite remember what we what we brainstormed, but essentially, someone, I think it was Matthew Poole, one of the um, my co directors, said, "What if it's about a mime in the street?" And he has a heart attack. Um, and I think I continued that sentence saying, oh, and, and he wakes up. No, he goes to a fun no, the funeral. There's a, there's a mind funeral. There you go. There's a mind funeral and he wakes up and it was all part of the thing. You know? 
I just kind of spoiled the entire film there, but um, yeah, it was sort of it's that sort of like spontaneous, like oh, what if and bam, boom, beam, and everybody kind of said their thing, and and it just worked there, which was really, really surprisingly enough, really simple. Uh, because we just went to the pub that one evening and we drank and, and started brainstorming ideas. And for this one that we've done this year, Lemonade Standoff, we had a, quite a couple of sessions. We couldn't really come up with anything. Oh, okay. Well, all good ideas start in a pub. That yes. is my <laughs> philosophy. <laughs> that is the truth, definitely. <laughs> so, obviously, in terms of footage, it's what, like three to four minutes of footage you get from three that one? 20, I think. Yeah, three minutes, 20 yeah. seconds. So how long did it take you to uh, film the the entire thing? One day, which is also really surprising for us uh, because there's so much technical aspects involved in the in the process that I, you would have almost guessed it was two or three days. But no, we did it all in one day uh, chronologically. Somehow we managed to pull off the logistics of, okay, we're shooting in the street while the mimes are getting all their makeup done. Then we cross over to the church and then we get everything set up. And the light is still there. Uh, so well, we were carried by a really good first AD, which also happened to uh, be one of the co-directors because we were so many HODs in this <laughs> in this film. Yeah. I uh, The first time I watched it, I when um, Josh, who was uh, playing the, the mime that has the heart attack, when he, um, spoiler alert for everyone, but when he um, pops up at the end and he's alive, I genuinely couldn't stop laughing because oh, I, was, yes. I wasn't expecting it. So and it was just everyone's expressions and just, I loved the way the um, the priest was so confused. I just <laughs> thought it was brilliant. I so, love that, that people love that part. Um, now that you mentioned it like the priest as well, because uh, that was our friend uh, who was stepping in for an actor that couldn't come. Um, oh, okay. And it turned out brilliantly because yeah, he has that sort of, Energy, like confused energy to himself. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the mind funeral, we 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 laughed so much at the pub about it that we knew <laughs> straight away if that makes us laugh, I'm sure people will laugh at it as well because it's so ridiculous, but it it makes sense, which is uh, when an absurd film has to be a thing. There needs to be yeah. some sort of sense involved. <laughs> yeah. No, it it is great. But you you have been to Cannes before, is that right? With Miss Encounter. Yes, yeah, yes. Did. yeah, yeah. So that was, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but that was an out of competition entry. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. yes. So how how was that process? Um, I presume so. You were out of competition, so that means it wasn't put up for awards. Is that yeah. right? But it was still shown at the festival. Exactly. Yeah. It, it's it screens as part of it, but it, there's no. It does. It doesn't. It's not in the run for an award. Um, right. Yeah. That was a. I, I got really lucky. Uh, to be honest, um, because uh, there was this huge competition uh, that was looking for like aspiring filmmakers and all kind of stuff to go to Canada and make a film that would screen there. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was a really long process, round after round, where essentially we got like funneled into like the final group, and that final group went onto the festival and made the film right there. Um, and then that got screened in the festival, which was right. sort of like, it's one of these weird filmmaking uh, competitions where it's like, we made it in the moment and it was kind of part of the festival. Um, so it's sort of like a, almost a romantic experience in that sort of sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that was uh, really good memories. That's why I'm also so excited to go back because it really, really does live up to its, to its standard. Yeah, it would be, I would absolutely love to go one day. It looks incredible. And yes. you always, I mean, the the films that get shown there are always so amazing. I mean, yes. it has to be to, to get to that point. But there's, I think I've recently this year have found a new love for short films um, mm. and film festivals. I just, yes, yeah, they're so... They're just so amazing. Every time I go to a fest- film festival, I just think, why haven't I gone to more? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just it's so inspiring. And even the ones you don't like, you you, you kind of reflect uh, upon them and think, oh, they did that so well though, and they that's so interesting. But why I didn't like that because of X factor or whatever. So it's it's just really inspiring overall. And everybody that is definitely aspiring to 
to to become a filmmaker should go to film festivals as much as it can. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, I agree. Um, and let's talk about another one of yours, um, Bittersweet, um, oh, yes. which which did win uh, it did win an award. So why don't you tell us about that? Yeah, uh, that was a uh, really interesting because um, I, I'm sure you'll get to this after, uh, but that was my first sort of point of contact with Javier Bardem um, because he's not a part of the film, but mm-hmm. we tried making it work. <laughs> okay. And I was really excited for it because um, I, I thought I had it in the bag, it was going to happen, mm-hmm. and it didn't. So sort of every, all the planning fell apart right at the end of uh, pre-production, and I, and it's one of those like filmmaking things where you think, ah, oh, the shoot is coming, is about to start, things didn't work out, what's gonna happen with this film, and you're kind of disappointed in yourself. Uh, but I don't really know how I how I put it all together to be honest. But it's somehow like I got the energy for it. Uh, we shot everything. It all went well. Well enough to win some awards. Uh, we won the jury prize in Wales International Film Festival. We won an audience award in Mint, which is uh, Nashville, I think. Um, Nifty as well in Seattle, um, and it did pretty well just around around America, and yeah. some European places, uh, countries. I mean, but but yeah, it was a it was a wonderful surprise. I was I was really um, I was. I was really pleased that people liked it um, because obviously as a, as a filmmaker, you never know what you've really made until people watch it. Um, The first thing is, of course, you have to be sort of happy with it, but that never really happens. (laughs) Uh, But if people tell you that it, that it, that they like it and that it works and that they, they've enjoyed it, um, then that's the best compliment you can get. Yeah. Amazing. So this, I mean, tell us a little bit about the storyline because it was based on someone you met. Is that right? Yes, sort of. Um, there was somebody uh, that I met that embodied uh, uh, Benedict, the, the main character, um, and it was just so in- so inspiring. Uh, this person in particular, that I, I, they, um, without getting too much into detail, they they had given up on themselves and mm-hmm. on life a bit, and so many second opportunities were handed to this person in particular um mm-hmm. and i was sort of part of that process and and it was so um so thought provoking the fact that somebody did, was presented with so many options to kind of reconduct their life and keep on going mm-hmm. and they just chose not to um mm-hmm. there's a lot more factors involved but that that really scratched my head for a while i thought what if what if there's a story about this and yeah, and maybe this person is changed by a certain person or a certain event, and that's how Peter kind of came along. But I didn't want to kind of like fall deep into the darkness of it, and I wanted to literally make a Peter Sweet film film where there was a bit of light and darkness to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, and again, if you've not seen it, go and watch it. It is a very good film. <laughs> so tell us then, the, what was the first time you realized that you wanted to get into? Phil and Megan, how did it all begin? The first time um, my dad sat me down, I remember, in our um, living area, living room, mm-hmm. and he put on um, Tim, uh, Tim Burton's or Henry Selig's Nightmare Before Christmas. Mm-hmm. And I remember seeing the skeletons, or uh, no, it's like the pumpkins at the beginning. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I was like, no, 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 I'm not going to watch this. I, I'm out. <laughs> I think I was like seven years old or eight. <laughs> <laughs> so I was really scared. I hadn't really watched a lot of films. I had watched like Toy Story, Lion King, and all of those. Um, but I saw that, and and I didn't really want to see it. But my dad, he's, he's a bit old, like old school in that sense. He sat me down and said, "You gotta watch it. You're gonna watch it right now with me." Like, okay, okay. So <laughs> I was forced to watch it, but I loved it. And mm-hmm. I remember finishing the film and just asking my dad straight away, "How can I make this? Like, I want to make this." Um, and we started doing like stop motion uh, oh, okay. with the toys that I had around uh, ever since. Cool. And that's how I kind of got into it. I, I started doing those like stop motion short films. And then when I was old enough, I got like my little like family camera. And then I started making short films and so on. So on. <laughs> Amazing. So your dad, I guess, was quite a big part of you sort of uh, finding that love for film. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I don't know what made him force me to watch the film. Um, 
um because i was i was little i I'd like I, I mean i wasn't like particularly like a scared sort of like cowardly little boy but um i don't know i thought he just saw the need for me to watch this sort of scary film that wasn't really scary um yeah so yeah that that was like my inciting incident to say um that that kind of got me started really not <laughs> Yeah. So is your was your dad uh did he do anything in, in film or um was it just No, no he, he's a theatre person. He's retired okay. now. Uh he's an uh, like theatre actor in Spain. It's uh it's not as big as um like in Broadway or 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 like all those like big sort of theatre businesses. Mm. Um but uh yeah yeah, he's always been like in theatre and I actually wanted to be a theatre actor before. Always, oh, okay. obviously, growing up next to him, uh, that's kind of what I wanted to do. But yeah, you know, dad, he just he he's never been he's never really been involved in film. So he just had like he he likes films as much as I do. So he just yeah thought that was appropriate to show me that. <laughs> yeah, did you um did you want to go into straight acting in theater or was it like uh, a bit of everything, dancing, singing, acting? Um, because I was little then, I just thought probably that I just wanted to act, you know. But yeah. That little, that sort of, um, what do you call it? That like, like little speck of me wanting to be a theater actor has always lifted me ever since. And I think part of me would have loved to do absolutely everything in theater, from tap dancing to singing to yeah. just straight performance. I would have loved that. And I think if 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 I if my career goes on as as planned, <laughs> hopefully not going to work. Yeah, I think it's um, I'll I'll maybe place a character myself, like a little character. That would be so yeah, that would be really cool. Yeah, I was <laughs> gonna say Tarantino. Yeah, stick yourself in in the background. <laughs> so yeah, tell us about the yeah. first time you you made a film. <laughs> so the first time I made a film, um, I'm gonna give you two different answers uh, because there's like the technical the technical one and the real one. Uh, yeah. The technical uh, one is I made like a I made a film short uh, stop uh, that stop motion film there you go mm-hmm. <laughs> um right after watching that movie for christmas and it was with like you know like these like like the pokeballs from pokemon yeah oh yeah uh, so i had two of those like the toys and i put one like two together like that mm-hmm. uh, like that there you go and one of them came out um like out of the other and i think that okay. was pretty much it i think like a little like another toy came in something like that that was like the first thing i've ever made but then the first proper film I made, um, proper, quote unquote, um, I think I had like, I was like 10 years old um, and my dad helped like film the whole thing and it was with my friends and I think it was like this sort of like monster hunt in my backyard and my like, I had like this big like teddy bear plushie um, oh, okay. and he was like, he had to kidnap one of our friends and we had to go there and, and sort of uh, rescue him. Uh, and they had a proper like beginning, middle, and end, um, yeah. which was pretty fun. I think we have the video somewhere because it's hilarious. Uh, it's just <laughs> so so ridiculous, but but that's yeah. I, I guess that's like the first film I made. Yeah, yeah. No, that sounds really cool. <laughs> I um went. I so I did study um, digital film production for a while. Nice. And the I I mean, like you say, like some films that you make when you're young are ridiculous but yes. great at the same time <laughs> and I remember me and my friend we made one where we're in my parents garage and it was just complete darkness you couldn't see anything and we submitted that as work <laughs> we actually <laughs> there was absolutely no point to it but we submitted it anyway that's um, beautiful and our, uh, yeah just a just complete darkness <laughs> And I think there was really randomly some chainsaw noises in there. Um, <laughs> yeah, so you can see that why I didn't go into film making as a career. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no, I, that that that's funny that you mentioned because growing up, maybe when I was like from ten to fifteen or so, and something like that, I did think, oh, wanting to make a film that was in pitch darkness. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> it was just, yeah, and it was just the sound. Yeah. <laughs> I su- I suppose if it's done properly it could really work. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us what's coming up next for you then. What have you got what have you got in store? So we've got we've got multiple things uh luckily. 
We've got uh, Lemonade Standoff, which is our new super straight eight entry. And we're mm -hmm. finding out this Sunday or Monday uh, if we got in uh, into the BFI and then if we won top eight. And therefore, we're watching another film in Cannes this year. Yeah. Um, then we have Walking Fernando, which is my uh, MA grad film. Um, mm -hmm. And that's starring Javier Bardem uh, as Fernando the Fish. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Which is uh, really surreal, uh, to say the least. Um, <laughs> and then um, we're, we've written another short film in Spanish because I'm, I'm from Barcelona. And there's a, there's a story that, that is really personal to me that, that, I, that I've really wanted to tell for a long time because it's really, really interesting from my, from my opinion. And uh, I can't wait to film it and, and get it out of the world. But first, working for an undercomes. Uh, comes um, to festivals and we'll get all that done first. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I have some projects um, that are in the in the oven and they'll be for a while, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, and all of this while I'm working as an AD, which is not hectic, hectic enough. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, yes, yeah, so it sounds like you've got quite a lot coming up. Um, but yeah, hopefully... I keep my fingers crossed for for cans and thank you. Just yeah, <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait to see more of your stuff. So yeah, thank you. I look forward to that. And Lemonade Standoff uh, is starring Josh, by the way, Josh Harvey. So oh, you'll perfect. see more well, of him. <laughs> yeah, I will definitely, I'll definitely give that a watch. Um, amazing. Well, I like to ask a random question about the first time you've done something so this okay. this question is just going to be really really random um yeah. but yeah tell us the first time you cried at a film oh good question first time <laughs> i cried mm, i can't really remember unfortunately but um, I can tell you the first time I cried. Oh well, I actually, I, yeah, I have, a, I have an answer. Um, yeah. I cried at Titanic, of course. <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> of course, <laughs> it did not help that there was a live orchestra in front as well, because it was one of those like oh. live orchestra, yeah, uh, like, uh, screenings. Mm -hmm. um, and that was also the first time I cried uh, in front of my friends. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that was pretty embarrassing, but I think we were all crying, so we were like, you know, all of this, in, we were all in this together. Um, I bet that was amazing, though, seeing it with a live orchestra. Oh, yes. It was also the first time I watched it, so it was um, oh, wow. really impactful. Yeah. Yeah. I, to be fair, I went to see, because when it was the anniversary, they brought it back out in the cinemas. Yes. Yeah, in the audience. Yeah. Yeah, so me and my friend went to see it, and I was sobbing my eyes out. Bearing in mind, <laughs> I'd seen the film so many times, but it is a it is one to cry to. <laughs> yes, it's a beautiful film. It's it's really underrated by the people that just label it as a romantic mm. film, you know, mm. and that sort of like cheesy romantic Titanic film. But it's yeah. so much more. It's it's such a good absolutely. Film. Oh, it really <laughs> is. It really is. And then, well. Then they kind of ruined it by doing Titanic too. Oh. <laughs> well, yes. But we don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Max, it's been an absolute pleasure to speak with Likewise. you. Um really, really thankful that you came on. Um and yeah, good luck with everything. Thank you. And yeah, you too. We'll see you. Thank you. Yeah, Thank we'll you see for you having soon. Me over. Yeah, hopefully. No